Welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at a connection between the Hittites and the Macedonians. I just want to refresh our memories with the two questions or the two statements that we're working with. The ancient Macedonians were not Edomites and the other one, the Macedonians had never been Greek. Now this is not the only perspective out there on the Macedonians. This is just one perspective that we're considering that the Macedonians had never been Greek, but then who were the Macedonians? We're going to use this PDF. Let me just show you the title. Sometimes I forget to show the titles of these PDFs and the, you know, the authors. This one is called The Hittite Empire Comparing the Kati and the Kittim, Their Unique Macedonic Origins, History and Mythology. So I'm going to think about this as the the Hittite world and the Macedonian world. So is there a connection? It's quite a long PDF. I just want to pick out one interesting connection. The one that I found very interesting. Let me just find it for you. We'll just read this one. So it says you're a striking testimony of the profound connections between the, you know, the Hittites and the Macedonians. We're going to look at this custom or this ritual. Okay, so a purification by passing the whole army headed by their king between the two separated parts of the sacrificed dog cut in half, practiced by the Macedonians before war campaigns. And then we go to here. In the, Hitt in the Hittite ritual of the rooted army, or the routed army, we see a typical dog serving ritual. If the troops are defeated, they must pass through a gate made of hawthorn. So we see, you know, the Hittites and the Macedonians sharing a very um, unusual custom or ritual. So that's a very interesting connection. And then we started the video with a picture of the um, of the uniform. So it also says about um, another um, particularity that bonds the Hittites and the Macedonians is the nationality color of the army uniforms. So there's many different connections in this PDF. You know, it's, you can't really pick them all out. It's difficult to go through them. But that's what we're going to be considering for this video is, if we just go back to the title, you know, this connection with the Hittite world and the Macedonian world. But we're also working in this playlist you know, what do we know about Esau and Edom? So that's kind of the other part of this that we're thinking about. If we go to Genesis, so Genesis 26, and it says, And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Edom the Hittite. So Esau intermarrying into the, into the Hittites. So then if you want to, you know, get an idea of, you know, what Esau is intermarrying into, you know, the world of the Hittites. We need to think, you know, do we really know or understand the Hittite world? And now we're also seeing that it could be connected to the Macedonian world. So that's kind of why we, you know, thinking about these, you know, these questions. So what I would like to do for our perspective, I thought this could be an interesting way to help with our perspective, is think about the generations after the flood and I want to count the generations to get to Esau. I know it might be a bit small but we're going to count from Noah through the line of Shem. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm oh, sorry I should have gone to here, 10, 11, 12. So 12 generations to get to Esau and if we think about the, the Hittites and we're told that the Hittites they descend from Heth, son of Canaan. So we need to go to the line of Ham. So we go one, two, three. So three generations to get to Heth, the progenitor of the Hittites. Just to help with our perspective to see that, you know, there's many generations till Esau is born. So this Hittite and this Macedonian world, you know, there could be a lot of history happening before, you know, Esau is even born. 
So if we go back to that question or that statement when it says the ancient Macedonians were not Edomites, then you can say that that's correct or fair because you know the ancient Macedonians were already on the scene you know, before Esau was born. But if we think about what we were speaking with this dilemma, you know, why does it have to be a dilemma where we have Haman in the Bible described as a Edomite, but then in the Apocrypha described as a Macedonian? And we're just thinking now about this new information, this Hittite and this Macedonian world. If Esau intermarries with the Hittites, you know, is that not going to bring the descendants of Esau you know, into this Hittite Macedonian world? So then is it really a dilemma that, you know, or should we say, can't we consider that it, that a descendant of Esau could be described as a Macedonian if Esau is intermarrying into the into the Hittites? So I just wanted to provide, you know, some sort of, uh, if you want to say like an answer to how this could maybe both be true, that Haman could be described as an Edomite or a Macedonian if this, um, if this solution is not correct. So they did offer a solution. I don't know if this is correct or not, I can't say. But just wanted to provide something where we could, we could see the potential that you know, an Edomite could be described as a Macedonian. And could it be with the, with the Hittite and the Macedonians? Is there a connection between the Hittites and the Macedonians? And then if Esau intermarries into the, the Hittites, you know, it could bring the Edomites into this world of the Hittites and the Macedonians. But I, if we think about, <clears throat> sorry, let me just have some water. I still haven't fully recovered from this um, sickness. I want to re remind ourselves that we also, you know, we're working with this playlist, the history of North Africa and the Mediterranean. You know, I want to come back to this and I don't want to be taken too far off course. So let me show you what I mean. Because if we, if we really wanted to understand the Hittites, and we might need to have a better understanding of the Hittites to to know what to know what Esau is intermarrying into, we um, we have seen connections with the Hittites and the Etruscans. So the Etruscans, an ancient civilization of Italy. But notice with the study with the Hittites, it says the Hittites were an Ugro Altaic people. So Ugro Altaic, we're going to be thinking Hungarian and also Mongolian. But then notice it says the language was nearest to the Finnic group. So Finnish. So with the Hittites, if we were going to study the Hittites, it could draw us towards Hungary, Mongolia, towards Scandinavia. So it's going to take us away from this region that we've been looking at, this region of North Africa. So Libya, Algeria, you know, to study the Hittites is going to take us away from here. And then also, if you think about the Macedonians, if we really wanted to understand the Macedonians, it could also pull us away. But we did see with Alexander the Great, you know, what was Alexander the Great a legitimate pharaoh of Egypt with Alexander coming to Egypt? Is the origin of the Macedonians, you know, in this region of Egypt? So, yeah, that's what we want to really try understand is the origins. So we've done this playlist. We're working on this playlist, the history of North Africa and the Mediterranean. We've seen very, we've, you know, we've discovered some very interesting connections. But with all the connections that we've done, we haven't actually spoken about the Hittites directly. So I think it would be very strange and you could maybe say a bit of a problem if we did this whole playlist and we didn't speak about the Hittites or we didn't find anything about the Hittites for this region because you know, we're learning that the Hittite Empire very influential. So I would like to just read to you what I saw on here. It was very interesting. It says here, the white Syrians being connected with the white Libyans. So the white Syrians being connected with the white Libyans. 
But now it's very interesting when you think about the, the white Libyans. So it says here, the Libyans themselves belong to a race which can be traced through the peninsula of Spain and the western side of France into the British Isles. So if we think about that, so the white Libyans, but when you trace this, this, this race um, or the migrations, you know, it's North Africa through the Iberian Peninsula to France to the, the Britain, to the British Isles. But then we need to think about that, um, think about this connection. You know, the white Syrians with the white Libyans. So if we go to the page on the white Syrians, notice how it's connecting this people with regions like the Anatolia, with Asia Minor, and with these kingdoms like Cappadocia, Cilicia, and the Pontus. So the white Syrians. But they've been connected to the white Libyans. And then the migration for these people, according to this, you know, this work, this scholar, is um, yeah, from North Africa towards Spain, France, and the British Isles. I'll try to show you the work. The Hittites, the story of a forgotten empire. So for those of you who have been watching the channel for quite a while, you'll probably understand what, what, why I'm, I'm bringing this up and saying what I'm saying. If you're new to the channel and you don't understand the significance of what we could be saying, then I'm going to try start to do a summary for this series, and then I'll try explain that. But it's very important that we do have this connection with the Hittites and this region that we're studying, and probably more significant, um, significantly that they've been connected with the white Syrians, because then we would have Syrians in North Africa. And that would be very important for our picture that we've been working on. So what we're going to try to do then is come back to this um, playlist, because we just had a temporary break or a pause, come back to the history of North Africa and the Mediterranean, and to try to start thinking about, uh, you know, summarizing. It's going to be very difficult because we've got many different connections. But yeah, it's interesting thinking about the King of Africa helping the children of Esau. You know, why is the, you know, why was the king of Africa friendly to the, to the children of Esau? And we, we can't fully answer that yet, but maybe if we think about, you know, this Hittite Macedonian world and Esau intermarrying into the, into the line of the Hittites, to the family of the Hittites, you know, what, what worlds would that bring the descendants of Esau into? Or what other nations would then be friendly to them? So we can maybe explore that way. And then this could be very important with the, with the white Syrians being connected to the Hittites, but then at the same time being connected to the white Libyans. So we'll try, um, I'll try, definitely try explain this in regards to the, what we spoke about here for the, for those of you who are new to the channel and maybe don't understand the significance so I hope you um, found this video interesting. This could be a very interesting connection between the Hittites and the Macedonians. So that's why I know it's a little bit strange because, you know, I said we can't explore the Hittites just yet and we can't explore the Macedonians because it will potentially take us, you know, further away from this region. But we do see the Hittites being connected to this region with the white Syrians. And then that, that, that'll take us back to, uh, take us back into this playlist where we can try to start to summarize. So yeah, let me know um, what you think about this video. If you'd like to share any comments. And um, yeah, it's nice to have people sharing comments. So yeah, thank you for all those that do share comments, if, whether it's to share what you know or what you come across or whether it's to you know say something positive so yeah it's very much appreciated so thank you for watching this one and we'll see you in the next video